Welcome to the introduction of Star UML. Now I've just installed Star UML on my Windows 10 machine and we're going to go over to that, activate that program. This is a very useful open source program that will help you create ERD diagrams even with the evaluate copy. ERD diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, help you create the pseudocode for databases. Now, right now I'm checking to make sure that I've got the dynamic da uh, data definition language installed. Don't see it there, so therefore let's come down here and grab the data definition language, install that into the star UML. And now the star UML pseudo chart maker will help me create ERD diagrams. So I come over here and I'm going to create a brand new template from the data model and that changes my entire uh, selections here there's my main here's my project and the important part of this is as I go through and inst and type in all of the text for the project author copyright this is building documentation for me so as far as your homework goes all you have to do is type this in be thorough and it's you're building your chart and your homework uh, turn-in sheets all at the same time. You turn it in as <clears throat> PDFs and HTML online. Copyrights. Copyrights are very important. You have to have a circle C. Now, circle C is the Alt key 0169 with the word copyright for the United States. Circle C is for international. And then, of course, the date, then your name. I usually like to put uh, all rights reserved so that I have full rights across that. Right now I'm actually giving my data model a inf piece of information and typing in some documentation that would go with this particular uh, data model of what I'm trying to build. This will come in handy. Now I'm going to actually start building my ERD and all I do is I just draw a little square on here and it gives me the title of the entity table that I want to create. I'm going to build a high score table for my game that I'm building. One of the attributes of my high score table is going to be the record ID. And of course I come over here and I call it record ID and I give it a data type. We'll study more about data types later because right now we're just building a logical ERD, the pseudocode for databases. And as we deploy our pseudocode into physical databases like Microsoft Access or MySQL, this, uh, this actually becomes very important of what data types we choose. Next is going to be the player's name label that, choose some text, variable text. Uh, I'm going to set it here, uh, give some documentation of what this is going to be like. Notice all the check boxes over here. This is where I can accept null information. Uh, in other words, they don't have to fill in their first name. Now the primary keys that we'll study here in a little bit will be required that it's not null. We'll study those in just a bit. Here we have the, uh, the game that uh, we're going to be uh, attaching our score to. You have to excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold, so my audio is going to be terrible. I thought about using text-to-speech, but there we go. So, um, as we begin studying primary keys and foreign keys, I'm going to actually key into, or have a foreign key into the database entity table that has my games. So I'm actually connecting high score to a particular game. And this will give us a many high scores to one particular game, a one to, one to many. The one game has many high scores. This is going to be that one individual player's unique score that's being uh, typed in. It's going to be a big integer. Uh, it depends how you create your games, whether it's going to be bigger is better or smaller is better. Uh, I'd like to know what date that way I can actually see how active the databases are, how active people are playing my games, along with other analytics that I get from uh, some of the other uh, vendors that I have. Now, saving. Saving this becomes kind of important. Come over here, <clears throat> over to the file system. Save as... I think I got stuck here. I'm going to export as, and here I can export it as a PNG, JPEG, or I can export it as a PDF, or everything that I've built right now, plus the documentation that I've written, is saved as an HTML for online documentations. 
very useful if you're using GitHub in team partnerships. Okay, making sure I save all that. Over here, come, and there we go, finally. <clears throat> there's my PDF, and there's my uh, project that I just saved. No, I'm not going to erase over the top of them, because I saved them once before. Export. There's my JPEG that I saved. has a picture of it. I think the reason I had to do all those saves over and over was because I was still in the dialog box. Here is my project file. And then now we're going to go over here and export all my HTML documentation, which is really kind of handy. Uh, as you begin doing group uh, projects with this, you'll find that here you can see what other people have created as you're building your projects. Uh, I like to save all my stuff in a, a regular location. I'm putting it over here in our class folder so I can find it again. And you have a copy of this in your student files so you can take a look at all the HTML documents. And I think here in a minute there's my tools. DDL. Generate the DDL. Now this is going to be really handy for your final project. What's going to happen with this DDL is it generates everything that we drew in this model has been created in SQL creation statements. And that will help us build all the inserts, all the data definition languages, and be able to submit that in our final project with the hardcore uh, the code that we've been uh, building print to a PDF and now I have a PDF this was a project to a customer I now have a sample of a project so they can take a look at it and see if it works for them as I continue on to march with uh, completion of their projects alright thank you for viewing